The sermon message today is going to be on thankfulness for Christ reconciliation because it changes everything. You know, the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18 that we should give thanks in all circumstances for that is the will of God in Christ for us. And then 2 Thessalonians 5 beginning in verse 16 it says this, Rejoice always, pray continually, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Well, that uh, really makes it clear as to what we ought to be mostly doing in our living. We ought to be thankful in all circumstances for what God is doing in our lives or allowing to happen in our lives. So how do we think to be in that frame of mind? Well, I have three ways that I feel help us get to that frame of mind. And the first one is that we always remember that God so loved us that He sent His one and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to us so that we could be saved and not condemned. And it says that in John 3, 16 and 17. The second thing that we can think and believe is that we need to believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive all sin for all people and all time. And that when He did that, we were reconciled to God. And the third thing that we need to think and believe is that since we are reconciled because Jesus, when He was raised from the dead, gave us life in Him, that we are included in Christ's ministry of reconciliation. So let's look at that in uh, 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, beginning in verse 18. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 18 through 20. All this is from God, who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation with God is, in my opinion, the most important thing of what the relationship is with God in Christ. Because the reconciliation implies a close relationship like we saw between Adam and Eve and God in the garden. They walked and talked with God every day. It's very personal and intimate. That's the kind of relationship that was restored or reconciled when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. That particular ministry of His that He's done for us, He has now given to us as believers to share it, pass it along to others who need to know that wonderful news about our future. In verse 19, and this is what reconciliation means in verse 19, that God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ not counting people's sins against them. That's what it means, according to what Paul wrote here. And I believe he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So it's ours to do with what we will. Hopefully we'll decide it's worth the while to share it. And even receive it more fully ourselves. I have found that as I've shared it more, I understand it more. I'm more appreciative of what it means to me and to all humankind. In verse 20, then, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making His appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So being thankful for what God has given to us in Christ is a tremendous place to start and understanding how to be thankful in all circumstances. All circumstances test us as to how we're going to be thankful. It's not always obvious what it is that is that hidden nugget in the trial or the test or the issue or the problem that we're facing. But it is certainly something that Paul came to appreciate. One of the things that Paul was thankful for as he shared the gospel message was the partnership that he had with all the brethren. And that's found over in Philippians, the first chapter. 
Philippians, the first chapter, beginning in verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you, he wrote to the Philippians. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until today. That's an amazing thing to recognize from Paul's perspective how he appreciated the partnership. You know, we're all in the gospel message together. The good news is for all of us to share. And when we can be thankful for everybody else's participation in that, can you imagine the joy it really and truly brought to him? Sometimes we only think about ourselves or maybe just a very narrow uh, sphere of influence we have, but when we think of everybody who's in our lives who can be participating in partnership, it's amazing. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And I believe that. I believe that from the time we're conceived in our mother's womb until the day we take our last breath, there is a will of God in us that He is bringing to completion. And we have to be thankful for how He's working with everybody to see that unfold for us. It's not going to be the same as with somebody else because we're unique. We have a unique relationship with our Creator God. In verse 7, it is right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. So that is a wonderful relationship that Paul had with the Philippian brethren. Then over in chapter 4 of Philippians, beginning in verse 4, here we find Paul talking about the, some of the circumstances he found himself. And he is going to conclude here in these verses that to have the peace of God in his heart and mind, he needed to be thankful for his circumstances. And to know that Jesus Christ was there to help him through each and every circumstance he had that was trying and difficult. So in verse 4 of Philippians 4, we see Paul writing here, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. With an exclamation mark behind it. Well, you realize through all the things that Paul went through, shipwrecks, stonings, all manner of things that we wouldn't want to go through for sure, he came up with the conclusion that rejoicing was the thing to do. Because that was the best medicine to get through what he'd gone through to go forward. Let your gentleness be evident to all. And sometimes when we have difficulties, we want to become anything but gentle. <laughs> so, you know, he's saying rejoice and then be gentle and have it be evident to all because the Lord is near. <laughs> and he really is, you know. Our next breath could be it. He is that near to us. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So rather than just having a laundry list by itself, saying, I need this and this and this and this, how about thank you, God, for all the things you give me every day that I sometimes take for granted. And I could use a few other things along the way. Would you be so kind and caring and loving of me to provide those for me? And he does. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, so thankfulness brings us into the fact that Jesus guards our hearts and our minds. He guards us. He, he doesn't want us hurt or suffering. It's not who He is. But He, he is a God of thankfulness. I mean, you know... He says that He's love. He's the full definition of love. But in love is thankfulness. And aren't you glad that God is that way? That He would want to just be thankful for you and for everybody else? And that He loves you. You know He's just appreciative of who you are. And 
what you bring to the table. Over in verse 10 of Philippians 4, it says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Now, that could almost sound like he's being a little negative there, but we'll find out in the next verses that he's not. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. So even though he understood it, he still felt the lack of not receiving their concern, as we all would. Verse 11, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Aha! Paul found a secret. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And this is his secret. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. That was Paul's secret. Jesus was always there to help him through any and every circumstance he was in. And he's our secret too. Psst, hey, keep this a secret. No, no, no. Let it be known far and wide. Paul said, share the good news. And so that's what we'll do. <clears throat> you know, being thankful for one another enlightens our eyes. Paul uses that kind of talk, that kind of language. It opens the eyes to our heart. You know, we can see with our heart how others are doing and not doing and what the need is in other people's lives. In doing so, we see the glorious inheritance that is waiting for us. Because Jesus has put us here on the earth to know Him, to know His love and to love Him in return, and to participate with Him in the ministry that He has given to all of us who believe. It says over in 1 Peter 2, verse 21, that He wants us to follow in His footsteps and share with His sufferings because He shares with our sufferings. He comes to us and ministers to us and He uses people like us to do that with Him. So in Ephesians, the first chapter, in verse 15, we see Paul talking to the Ephesian brethren. Ephesians 1, beginning in verse 15. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. So, if we remember others in our prayers for what they do to help us and help others, you know, do what God would want us all to do, well then, it opens up our hearts and minds in a way that we wouldn't have it opened up otherwise. He says in verse 17, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. So that was Paul's prayer for the brethren there. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His glorious inheritance in His holy people, and His incomparably great power for us who believe. And that power is the same as the mighty strength He exerted when He raised Christ from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly realms. That's a lot of power. It's the kind of power that is released in us when we are thankful for others and how they bring what they bring to the table of life and how we then love others in that kind of relationship. You know, you can get a whole lot more done among thankful people than you can among a number of cynic people. Uh, you all know that. We all do that so much better. It seems like the creativity in us flows when we're thankful and everybody else we're dealing with is thankful too. You know, we bring all of our pennies to the table to, to do a project and by the grace of God, somehow it gets done. And then we're all thankful again for that. 
So, you know, we live in some difficult times. The world has always been full of difficult times. Ever since Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, it, we entered into the end times. And it's been wars and rumors of wars ever since. So we always have these difficulties that we have to deal with in our current living. And in the Roman Empire, when Paul wrote his books, his epistles to the church brethren, uh, there were some real despots who were ruling the Roman Empire, like Nero. And Nero was the one who ended up arresting Paul and having him brought to Rome, and uh, he was going to be the one to behead him eventually. So what Paul tells us in 1 Timothy how we should approach those who have authority over us. So in 1 Timothy, the second chapter, in verse 1, Paul tells us today, under the inspiration again of the Holy Spirit, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Now that's just a, a real challenge all in itself, because some people we just don't get along with very well. So when we're in that situation, we just need to be thankful for them and pray for them that they could come to know Jesus more and that we could know Jesus more too. Because in knowing Jesus, then we're thankful and they're thankful and everybody's thankful. And then we can get along easier. But then Paul makes another statement about being thankful. And in verse 2, for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. And you know, when we get all politically charged up like we are right now, sometimes that peacefulness goes away. And we don't see anything good to pray for the opposition. But we need to pray for those in authority. Because we want to live peaceful and quiet lives, do we not? Thankfulness is what brings that about because it brings around prayer. <laughs> Out of thankfulness we pray. And we can pray for others. And pray, as Paul says, strategically for those in authority over us. So that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. Which is what we desire to do as Christians. So it just goes counterintuitive to our human nature that would want to curse people over us who we don't agree with. Or revolt against or rebel against them. But that's not the Christian way. The Christian way, the will of God for us, is to be thankful for all things and all circumstances. In verse 3, Paul says, This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So we pray for others in authority with thankfulness, then we are asking that God enter in that He reveal Himself to those in authority how to better care for their constituents, the people they're ruling. And in doing so, hopefully they'd come to know Jesus, perhaps through our example, through His spiritual intervention in their lives. At any rate, that's Jesus' desire, and He used thankfulness as a tool for us as Christians to have influence in their living. So you know, we're all here as ministers of Christ reconciliation, and he said there in 2 Corinthians 5 that we're also ambassadors of his kingdom. And over in Romans, the 14th chapter, Paul lets us know what the most important things are in our Christian faith, and what we're supposed to be about as far as uh, the way we live our lives. Over in chapter 14 of Romans, beginning in verse 17, it says this, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So what is righteousness? Well, that comes from Jesus, and He's attributed His righteousness to all believers. Over in Matthew 6.33, it says that if we seek after 
His righteousness, then all the things we need every day will be provided for us. So, here we have the righteousness of Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. And therefore, we have the peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And in our living, you know, to have the peace and joy of God is just tantamount to having everything we could possibly need. Because whether we have just a crust of bread and a glass of water, with peace and joy, it seems much more than that, doesn't it? So, we need to just realize that the kingdom of God is of these things, the other spiritual qualities. When you have joy, it's a lot easier to be thankful, isn't it? So, and you have peace, that just heightens that, thank you God, I feel at peace today. Well, here you go. You're representing the kingdom of heaven on earth just by expressing that to somebody today. In verse 18, because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval too. You know, it's hard to be turned down when you're that way, when you have the righteousness of Christ and the peace and joy of the Holy Spirit being expressed. They say, hey, come on, let's have a, a drink or a cup of coffee or a glass of water together. Uh, because you're pleasant and you're thankful and you're filled with joy. So God is very well pleased with that and then other people are as well. In verse 19, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. And on a good day we do that. <laughs> it's when we're not in, in that good mood that we have a hard time with that. So. How do we shift gears? Well, again, we have to go back to the basics, don't we? What has Jesus done for us? Let's think on those things for a few moments. Ah, oh, what do I have to worry about? Look, He's already taken care of my eternity, and every day He's with me. He'll never leave or forsake me. What am I all upset about? Uh, sometimes a good talking to by oneself is a good thing. It's called meditation and then prayer, and then we can actually step out and live our lives in a way that's pleasing to others. You know, when people are pleased by our behavior, then they say, what did you say again? And you can tell them some things about your faith so that they're more interested in finding out some more things about your faith. It's an interesting thing about how to share the gospel. It's just using what we've been given in the relationship with Jesus Christ to receive His righteousness, and to express that in the joy and peace of the Holy Spirit. So would you please join with me in prayer. We thank you, dear God, that we can be thankful because you have given us all the tools we need to be thankful. You have just blessed us abundantly. You've given your very life for us that we could live with you for eternity in the most intimate relationship possible. And yet here we are struggling sometimes trying to make it from one moment to the next but help us in our struggles we do have struggles we do have needs please provide our needs for us please comfort us and give us your peace and joy and help us to receive the fullness of your righteousness that we can be the good example being the light that you are to the world around us we thank you we can help one another and pray for each other and we ask and pray your blessing this coming week that you'll help us to be all that we are in you, Jesus. Thank you for making us your ministers of reconciliation. It's in Jesus, in your name, Jesus, that we pray. And all together we say, Amen. Amen.